Hello, family. Thanks for joining our service today. Remember, you can always get more information and updates from our website, linkedupchurch.com, or by checking out our Linked Up Church app. Well, it's almost time for service, and that, of course, means it's time for prayer. For the next few moments, we welcome you to prepare your heart and mind for an unforgettable encounter with God. Then you'll be led in prayer by one of our anointed ministers. Good morning, Linked Up Church. Boy, you guys sound like y'all ready to pray this morning. How you guys doing this morning? Awesome, wonderful, wonderful. Well, my name is Minister David Walker. I am the Connect Group Director here at Linked Up Church as well as the Men's Ministry Coordinator. And it is an honor. It is always a privilege to be leading you in pre-service prayer this morning. Our foundation scripture for this morning is coming out of Jeremiah 29 and 11, and it is being read from the New Living Translation. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And so we're going to be praying. That's our foundation scripture for today's pre-service prayer. We're going to be praying over uh, four points this morning. And our prayer points are that we grow in recognition, that we uh, possess a burning desire to fulfill God's plan for our lives, uh, that we experience the goodness of God in a new and fresh way, that we receive the future and hope God has prepared for us, and we also, we want to pray for today's services, okay? And so, for those of you online, thank you for adding your supply of the Spirit today. Let's all go to heaven in prayer, all right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you first and foremost for this day that you have made. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress he is our God, and in him we do trust. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life. We thank you for breath in our bodies. We thank you, Father God, that you're a good God and that there is none other like you. Father, we pray this morning. We thank you for your word. You said the entrance of thy word giveth light. You said the entrance of your word gives understanding to the simple. We thank you, Father God, that we possess, Lord, a burning desire to fulfill your plan for our lives. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. You said, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not disaster. Father, we thank you for revealing and unveiling and showing us the purpose and the plans that you have for our lives. Father, thank you that we are not people who walk in the dark, but we're people who walk in the light. We are the children of the light. You said for us to let our light so shine before men that they would see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. 
So, Lord, thank you that we are children of the light. We live in the light. We walk in the light. And we thank you, Father God, that as we do that, we're seeing more clearer day by day the purpose and the plans that you have for our life. Lord, we take the limits off. We take off all the barriers in the limits that we've set on ourselves, that we've set on you. We don't try to bring you down to our level, but we come up. We come up. We look up to you, Lord. We look up to you. We come up to you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for a burning desire in our heart to fulfill your purpose and your plan for our life in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We pray, Father, that we experience the goodness of God this year in a new and a fresh way. Your word says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that puts his trust in him. Father, we put our trust in you today. And we are in expectation of your goodness being revealed in a new and a fresh way. Father, your word says, trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we acknowledge you. And Lord, you're directing our paths. We are walking in step with the Spirit. We are walking in step with the Spirit. We are walking in step with the Spirit. And we thank you, Father, that as we are in lockstep with the Holy Spirit, as we're trusting you, as we totally depend and rely on you, you're showing us what's ahead. You're showing us things to come. And you're revealing your goodness and your faithfulness to us. Thank you, Father God. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. But we trust in the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are safe. Father, thank you for being that safe place for us today. Thank you for being that safe place for us today. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Father, thank you for fresh and new goodness being poured out today. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that we receive the future and the hope that you have for our lives. How be it, you said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide us into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he is, that shall he speak. And he will show us things to come. Thank you, Father God, you were speaking of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing us things to come. Thank you that we receive the hope and the future, the expected end. We have it by faith in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you that we will not be derailed. We will not be distracted. We will, run, we will not run off with attractions. But Lord, our eyes are fixed on you. Our heart is set on you. And thank you, Father God. You said, call unto me, and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. Lord, we look to you, not to the circumstances, not to the challenges, not to the problems. We look to you to be our only source of joy, of peace, of comfort. We look to you because you're a good God and there's none like you father we pray for today's service we thank you father god that the moment people are driving into the parking lot that they begin to experience the tangibility of the spirit father that your presence meets them in the parking lot thank you father god every aspect every area of this ministry the children's church the plug the youth every the worship center father that the the word of the lord is being ministered is being preached is being taught and it flows oh it flows today there's a river flowing today a river of your spirit a river of faith 
a river of your goodness we thank you for that flow today in the name of Jesus father we lift up pastor Gregory today we thank you father God for this sent man we thank you father God that your anointing is upon him that he has an unction to function in the Holy Ghost today thank you father God for giving him utterance that he may speak boldly the oracles of God in which he ought to do thank you father God that this morning the word of the Lord has free course unchecked unstopped unhindered by any satanic or demonic force thank you father that the spiritual highways are clear free from distraction free from anything that would hinder today's service thank you father that the hearts and the lives of men their hearts are tender holy spirit convict the hearts and lives of men that they may hear the word of god and receive the engrafted word which is able to save their soul so father thank you for all the things that we've prayed for today we lift up our hands we lift up our hands and we say and this is the confidence that we have in you that if we ask anything according to your will you hear us and if we know if we know that you hear us whatsoever we ask whatsoever we ask whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desire of you so we believe it we receive it it is in Jesus name we pray and if you believe that shout hallelujah come on lift up church let's lift up our sound of revelation our sound of celebration he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy of our praise hallelujah we give you honor we give you praise no one else deserves it but you no one else comes close to you no one else above you we love you we love you we love you we love you we praise your name Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh glory to our God, hey, somebody lift up your hallelujah in this room, come on lift it up, lift up church, let's lift up the best sound we've got, give God praise in this house, hallelujah, good morning linked up church, how y'all feeling today? Welcome to the second quarter of the year. Y'all sound so excited. Who's excited about what God's doing in their life right now, in this moment? I want you to touch three people and say, what you've seen before, you haven't seen what he's got in store for you next. What you've seen before is just the floor. What you've seen, what you've seen before is just a, an inkling of what God's going to do in your life. Those of you online, thank you for being a part of our experience. What you've seen up until this point, that's just the appetizer. God's got something amazing in store for you. If you agree with that, somebody shout a hallelujah in this place. Yes, sir. We're going to have some fun today. We are celebrating some baptismal candidates. We're going to have a party. There's already a party going on in heaven. Let's start it down here. Let's go. Put your hands right here. Put your hands right here. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Let's say there is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain. That drowns sorrows, there is an ocean deeper than fear. Hey, there is a current stirring deep. It's overflowing from the heart of God. The of is crashing over us, the tide is and it's bursting. Up from the ground, we feel it now. Say bursting. Yeah. Come on, linked up, we know this. Let's say it now. We feel it now. We come alive in the river. Come on. We come alive in the river. Yeah. We come alive. Yeah. Everybody. 
Everybody put your hands on it. Let's go. Hallelujah. We've come to celebrate the Lord today. Let's say again. There is a courage stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God. A flood of heaven. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now, and it's bursting yeah. up from the ground. Everybody say, We feel it now, we come alive. Hey, we come alive today. Yes, so we come. Make some declarations, team. Break open prison doors. Break open prison doors. Set the captives free. Set all the captives free. Yes, sir. Spring up a well. Yes, Lord. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Say nothing can stop this joy. Hey, we're dancing in the streets. Hey, spring up a well. But all the way in, not just ankle deep, waist deep, but all the way in, not just ankle deep, waist deep, but all the way in, we're going all the way in, we're going all, not just ankle deep, not just ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in, come on, come on, not just ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in, not just ankle deep, no. But all the way, not just ankle deep, no. Have your way to day, Lord, yeah. We're going on. We're going on. We're going on. We're going all the way. We're going all the way in. We're going all the way in. It's worthy of it all. We're going all the way in. We're going all the way in. We're going all the way. Praise God. Somebody say, I'm going all the way in this morning. Now, that didn't sound like you were going all the way in. Somebody say, I'm going all the way in this morning. Come on, say it by faith. Not just ankle deep, waist deep. I'm going all the way in. Now, some of you all act like you didn't used to dance when you were out there in the club or something. You got to add your own little self to it. Whatever you do, you got to say, not just ankle deep. Whatever you want to do to it, but you got to add your own little moves to it, right? Can we just do a little bit more of that, but add your personality to it. Don't just stand there, right? Point to your ankles, your waist, and then do something that says I'm going all the way in. Just a little bit more of that today. Just a little bit more. Yes, sir. Y'all ready to move? Yes. Here we go. Not just ankle deep. Not just waist deep. Not just ankle deep. Not just take a deep now. We're going on. Somebody show me one more time. Not just take a deep. 
Now, somebody give God a all the way in praise this morning. I just want to encourage someone in here today. You know, you don't have to stop being who you are because you got saved. Right? You just changed partners, right? So, so if you danced when you were out in the world, how many know you can dance for God? You can have fun for God. And I just want to make sure that we understand that in here so that we just don't become this stiff environment that visitors come in and all they see is us just standing there, all that energy and action in that song, and the only thing they can see us doing is this. But then they see you out there at the club, boy, you just, boy, you just. And then you come to church and, well, you know what I mean. I'm just talking about what they used to do out there. Can, can we just all commit that we're going to give God more than what we gave the devil when we were out there? Well, listen, this is Water Baptism Sunday, and so, praise God. These are people that are allowing the world to know that they are not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They want to make a public profession of what their internal belief is today. And so, by definition, water baptism is an outward sign of the inward grace of salvation. And so let's look at a text that supports that in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17 out of the New King James Version. It says, And then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. So notice Jesus himself is fulfilling the commission to be water baptized. Then in verse 14 it says, And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? But Jesus Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for this, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And that phrase, fulfill all righteousness, means fulfill every ordinance of God. See, John had an assignment from God, and Jesus had an assignment from God. From God. And if they both didn't do their assignments, then the will of God wouldn't get done in the earth. And so when John heard that, John immediately said, look at what his next response was. When he, uh, then, then he allowed him when he heard that. Verse 16, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. So in other words, he came completely out of the water, right? And so how many know you have to go all the way down into the water in order to come completely out of the water, right? And so the word baptized means to submerge, right? It means to be whelmed or whelped. It's what it means to get fully wet. Now, I don't know what your background is. I came from Catholicism, even though we were not Catholic. My mother sent us to Catholic schools. And so the result of that was the priest, I was probably in the fourth grade, and uh, he just took a scepter out, and I don't know if we agreed to it or not. We went to a mass, and, 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 and just everyone that was in the room, right, and they told us that we had been baptized on that day. When I became an adult at the age of 22, and I learned what that word baptized mean, I realized I had not been baptized biblically the correct way. So as a 22-year-old, uh, on my own, as a young adult, I went on and, and uh, received baptism the right way. So I wanted to draw your attention to that. And then it goes on to say here, and then the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Then suddenly a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So notice it pleased the Father that the Son was obedient to the Father. Do I have any children of God in here today? Right? And so if it pleased God that his Son was obedient to him, then you know it would please him if we're obedient to him as well. And so I want to offer something to uh, some people who may be here today, and it's called spontaneous water baptism. I want to encourage you and challenge you today to do something uh, you've never done before, right? Some of you all might be sitting there right now or standing there saying, 
I should have signed up for that. I knew I should have signed. Well, you, you, you're here, and we've made provision for you. So I don't know what your background is. I don't know what you, where you've come from, uh, but it is a commandment, right? It's not uh, water does not save. Water simply con- confirms. So you have to be saved before you get water baptized. Is everybody clear with that, right? So I'm not talking to someone who's not saved because the water will do nothing for you. But if you're already saved, then it will confirm your salvation publicly. So if you're out here today and you've never been water baptized, but you are uh, saved, remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28. He said, go ye into all the world, right, and do what? Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and then the Holy Ghost, right? And so that word baptize, again, means to submerge. So a couple of things I want to draw your attention to also. I can't, I'm going fast here because there's so much time in this service, and we've got another service coming behind it. But here's the issue, folks. The church is separated on this because of really two verses. Ephesians chapter 4 says that uh, if you don't baptize in Jesus' name, then it's not water baptism. That's the apostolics, right? And if you really read Ephesians chapter 4, nowhere in there is he talking about water baptism. He's talking about salvation. And the moment we're all saved, we're baptized into the body of Christ. He's not speaking to water baptism there, but for whatever reason, they took that and they separated and said, okay, if you don't get baptized in Jesus' name, then you didn't get fully water baptized. Then there's the Matthew chapter 28 crowd. And they say, if you don't uh, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then you're not fully water baptized, right? And so the church created dominations along those lines, and it split. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, what is our position? It says that there should be no division and no schisms among you, but that you should all be of the same mind and of the same judgment and that you should speak the same thing. So what do we do here at Linked Up Church? We baptize in the name of the Father, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of of the the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. So we cover all bases. Satan is defeated, and Jesus Christ is glorified in that kind of environment, okay? All right, and so if you're out here today and you've never been water baptized biblically, you've never fully gone down into the water, and you want to do that and just be spontaneous, do something you've never done today, I know you're saying, but I didn't come ready, I didn't come prepared. Well, we already prepared everything for you. If you'll make that decision today, and last time we did this in January, over 40 people responded spontaneously. Right. And so will you be in that new number today? And so look up here on the screen. We have everything that you all will need. We have a towel for you today. You'll get a raised up T-shirt. You'll get sweatpants. You'll get a raised up bag and socks today. And I'm telling you, we need to get one of those uh, things for the uh, uh, a bag or something for the a swim cap for the hair. I don't even mind paying for that. I'm putting that out there in the atmosphere again because that will hinder people. So if you're out here today and you're saying, Pastor, I want to do something I've never done before. I just want to be spontaneous. I want to get water baptized today. If that's you, just raise your hand right now. I didn't register, Pastor, but I want to jump in. Look at that. Two people right there. Come on, anyone else today? Come on, there's a young lady right there. Come on, anyone else today? Come on, come on, jump all the way in. Anyone else today? All right, I want you all to do me a favor. Those who have your hands raised, you see this raised up spontaneous registration sign. I want you to find your way, either come to the front, find your way to them, and they're going to take you so you can join in with us today. Come on, Linked Up Church, give them a big, 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 big round of applause. Praise God for you. Congratulations to you all. All right, praise God. Well, let's get going today. All right. So our first candidates today, I'll call them from right to left. Praise God. God is so good. So from my right to left, we have Isaiah Murray, we have Scholastica Foy, Sky, we have Pamela Whitfield, we have Victoria Washington, we have Elisa McCauley, and we have, well, Elisa McCauley. All right, so these are our first five water baptism candidates. So I have one question for all five of you. Have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? 
Praise God. So then upon the public confession of your faith, we do now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. We come alive today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We come alive. We come alive. In. Oh, 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 oh. All right, from my right to left, we'll have Tempest Young, we'll have Haley White, we'll have Tiffany Gibson. We have Walden Collins, and we have Bryson Cobb. And so I have one question for all five of you. Have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Praise God. So then upon the public confession of your faith, we do now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. From my right to left, we have Myron Cobb. We have Michael Glaspie. We have Frank Morgan. We have Kavari Riddick. And we have Abram Andrews. And so I have one question for all five of you fellas. Have you all received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Praise God. So then upon the public confession of your faith, we do now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Not just ankle deep, not just ankle deep, waist deep, but all the way in, yeah. Waist deep, but all the way in, oh, not just. We're going all, we're going all the way in. Just think we need it. So I just want to acknowledge we have, I'm not saying it all because we've got a lot to get through, but we have whole families up here. We have individuals, all kind of categories. So we have Eva, uh, Evangeline Johnson. We have Jasmine Johnson. We have Zoe McFadden. We have Zaniah McFadden. And we have Kiasha Graham. And so I have one question for all five of you. Have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Praise God. So then upon the public confession of your faith, we do now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Not just saying, not just ankle deep, waist deep, but all the way in, say, not just ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. Not just ankle deep, no. waist deep, all the way in. I think I just caught a vision for how we can 
almost organize a, a little dance with that song. <laughs> so you know how the song says, not just ankle deep, waist deep, but all the way in? Then that part when it says, we're going all the way in, that's when you just add whatever you just want to add to it. You just add yourself to it at that moment. What, what do you all think about that? So, so, so the next time we do it, right, we'll go ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. But when they get to that little break, when they say, we're going all the way in, just however you feel right there. Just, just go all the way in. Can, can you all do that for me? How many of y'all know God wants a joyous church? Come on, God wants a church that is on fire and excited for him, all right? So we, our next candidates are Christopher Morris. We have Cheyenne Morris. We have Shannon Morris, whole family right here, right? And then we have Malcolm Cook. And so I have one question for all four of you today. Have you all received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Yeah. Yes, well, praise God. So upon the public confession of your faith, we do now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here we go, not just ankle deep, waist deep, all the way. Not just ankle deep, not just ankle deep, waist deep, all the way. Not just ankle deep, waist deep. Here we go, we're going on. We're going Just take a deep, deep. Not 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 just take a deep, Here we go. We're going on. We're going on. We're going on. We're going on. We're going all the way in. 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 Here are our, our first three spontaneous candidates today. And so from my right to left, we have Brianna Coates, we have Amara Guerra, and we have Trinity Young. And so I have one question for all three of you. Have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Praise God. So then upon the public confession of your faith, we do now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Hey, out of the darkness, out of the darkness, into your So we'll continue with our spontaneous responses today. And so these four candidates are Zanea Murray, Samaya Bell, Rodriguez Sanderson, and Tracy Cook. And so, and so I have one question for all four of you. Have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Praise God. So then upon the public confession of your faith, we do now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, you called my name.
That's how the church of the Lord Jesus Christ should look every single Sunday morning. Full of joy, full of praise, full of dancing, full of worship, right? Full of all of the expressions of God. This should not be the driest place. This should be the liveliest place. See, that's why that next building... We just need bigger. One of the reasons we need bigger is so we can run without hurting people. Right? Sometimes people whip around that corner and they run right into that wall. Then they get on that back one right there. They trip over chairs. And so, so people don't run as much. But, but I promise you the next one will have plenty of room to do a whole lot of running. Praise God. Come on, let's get into this today. Father, you are good. You called us out of that grave, Father. And then you translated us into the kingdom of light, Father, the kingdom of your dear son. And we are so grateful and so full of joy for that today. We don't even want to think about where we might be, Father, if you hadn't pulled us out of that grave. Thank you so much, Father. So all of our dancing, our smiling, our expressions are a result of just the excitement that we're experiencing in the good life that you provided for us through your son, Jesus Christ, Father. So as we can conclude your plan for our life, God's plan, Father, give us even further revelation and understanding, Father. Help us walking out here not just having heard information, but actually knowing what to do with it, Father. And so we thank you, and we're going to give you glory for all the good that you're manifesting in this service today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him, boy, God looks so good on you today. Just tell him. Come on, find somebody else and tell them the same thing. Tell them, God looks so good on you today. Come on, find one more person and tell them, God looks so good on you today. If you're watching online, type, just celebrate yourself and say, God looks, type it in, God looks so good on me today. Say, even in my pajamas. <laughs> all right, praise God. We're going to conclude today God's plan. Of course, all of the notes are in that Version Bible app, Linked Up Church app. Follow along. I'm going to give you much more uh, than what's in the notes today. And so what I love about God's word is that it just keeps opening up and it just keeps giving revelation. So once again today, I want you to listen with an open spirit. I don't want you to listen like you know something. I want you to listen like I don't know anything. And Father, I just came today to learn something new about who you are in my life. All right. And so if you're uh, watching online, uh, just Really, do us a favor. Share the link today. This will be revelation knowledge for the body of Christ today. We know it's going to bless your heart, but share with others so that their hearts can be blessed as well. Even if you're sitting in the room today, this is some important information today. If you get this today, your life will never, ever, ever be the same. I promise you that. If you get this one revelation today, we're going to go right to point number five because I put my summary in point number five. So, again, we know we're talking about God's plan. And so let's pick up today with point number five. Point number five today uh, will be this. Point number five is God's plan, and we're going to look at the promise, right? So we know that there are three different times in the Scripture where he says that these things were done before the foundation of the world. There's a slight variation on that today. He actually also made 
a promise before the foundation of the world. So we know in our first session, we looked at that promise or we looked at his plan uh, from the beginning. And uh, those verses just let us know that there was something that happened before time ever existed, right? We've seen so far that before that time, before the creation of the world, uh, there was a love between the Father and the Son. So love uh, was here before the foundation of the world, and that was Jesus' revelation of that. But that love also extended to us who would believe. And so we know that he chose us before the foundation of the world. We were in his thoughts, chosen to be a holy and blameless people before him. And then on last week, we looked at the cost, right, Uh, that was paid. And that cost was provided for us before the foundation of the world, right? And so uh, for God to fully show humanity his love, Jesus would have to demonstrate this by dying in our place. Somebody thank God that Jesus died in our place, right? And so now with all of that in mind, right, all of that was to fully show humanity his love. That's what we celebrated on last week. If you don't know God loves you, listen, I don't know what else to tell you. If he sent his only begotten son to do this divine exchange, right, so that that he, he would suffer everything that you were supposed to be penalized with and you would get all the benefits from that. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know if your father left you, mother left you. I don't know what it is, but God loves you more than they ever could have collectively. That's how much he loves you, right? And I just want you to know that and understand that. But now, let's look at something else here. This, the Scripture also tells us uh, that there was an ancient promise that God made, and he made this promise before the foundation of the world, right? And it made so much sense to me studying it. Let's look at a text here in Titus chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Titus chapter 1, 1 through 3 out of the New Living Translation says this. This letter is from Paul, a slave of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. He said, I have been sent to proclaim, proclaim faith to those Uh, God has chosen and to teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly lives. So God is telling you what he's called to do. He said, I have been chosen to teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly lives. The highest goal in ministering on a Sunday morning and teaching the world word is to teach you how to live a godly life, not to be rich. Right? And how many of you know teaching you how to live a godly life will make you rich? Yeah. Is everybody clear on that? And so somewhere in there we, we flipped that, right, and we made it more about material things than spiritual things. Right? And that turned the world off. So the world didn't want to come here because they didn't want to hear that. Really, they were coming here to get their lives changed, and for them it ended up being more the same. So Paul makes it real clear here that that God chose me to teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly lives. Watch this. And this truth gives them confidence. So notice the truth will always give you confidence. Confidence in what? That they have eternal life. Not going to get, but that they have. Remember that because we're going to follow that thought. That they have eternal life. Which God, who does not lie, it's interesting that he says that God does not lie, right? Because men lie and women lie, but God does not lie. Come on, somebody thank God that we serve a God that does not lie, right? Men lie, women lie, but God does not lie. And he made this promise to them before the foundation of the world or before the world began. And now at just the right time, he has revealed this message, which we announce to everyone, It is by the command of God, our Savior, that I have been entrusted with this work for him. So Paul knew exactly what his assignment was in writing this letter, right? And that was to make sure that he taught them the truth and that that truth would lead them to live a godly life. And that they should have confidence in a promise that God had made for them before the world ever existed that they would have eternal life. And I want to continue to reiterate, he did not say that they were going to receive eternal life. He said that they would what? Have. Now, that's interesting there, right? Because we may have seen that or thought of that a little differently. So a promise was made before there was ever time or even time. A promise before there was anyone around except God 
and his only son, Jesus Christ. So this promise was made from the father to the son, and it involved eternal life. So the promise was that if the son would become the lamb of God, the father would grant eternal life to all of those who place their trust in him, him referring to Jesus. And God, who cannot lie, promised this before the beginning of time. And so I want to go back to some things that we have been saying, right? So this is not plan B for God. This is plan A. So then what was Adam's role? Adam was representative of all of us. So before God ever created Adam, he knew that Adam would fail because he knew Adam represented all of us. And so he had to put something in place long before Adam ever existed. That's what makes him God. Come on, somebody. Come on. Right? The other way would make the devil smarter than God. And that's where the devil has used that to confuse people because people have always thought, well, if God was God, why did he let and why did this and why didn't he just come in and he could have just stopped it? We wouldn't be in this situation if God would have just, but no, God had this. This is plan A for God. Everyone still with me out there? Somebody say this was plan A. Not plan, B. not plan B. Okay, so, so follow along. So someone might say then, eternal life is living forever. But that's not it. Stay with me. No one ceases to exist when they die. Everyone lives forever in either heaven or hell. So everyone has eternal life. So, well, then, here's the other thought. Eternal life must be living forever in heaven instead of hell. That's not it either. Right? Watch this. Let's look at John chapter 3, verse 36. John chapter 3, verse 36, Jesus read letter edition, if you're looking at one like that. He says, who, he who believes in the Son has what? He who believes in the Son, not, it doesn't say will receive. What does it say? So he who believes in the Son has everlasting life. Everlasting life there, everlasting means perpetual or forever. Life there is a Greek word, zoe. So whoever believes in the Son has the very life of God exuding out of them. You're getting ready to miss this today. And if you miss this, boy, you're going to miss something. Right? And so we're not talking about something that we get when we get somewhere else. So he who has the son has everlasting life, Zoe, right? And this is exuding out of them. And we're talking about life the way God intended it to be lived. And so he who has the son has everlasting life. Now, this is the, the negative part, right? We can't say in church anymore. No negative words in the sanctuary, right? No, you can't say sin. You can't say, no, no not at linked up church. If it's in the Bible, we're talking about it. Now, now, look at the other side of this. And he who does not believe in the son shall not see life. Not the way God intended it. Watch this. But, but what's the opposite of that? But the wrath of God abides on him. So one has life on him, and one has the wrath of God on him. Right? And we see this, right? The one that has life on him, things are working for him. Doesn't mean that they're not having challenges, but God is working out all of those challenges in their favor, right? The one that has the wrath on him has the same challenges, but doesn't have the power of God working with them to work out those challenges, right? We know it. We see it all the time. We can, we can see people and we can say, man, there's something on them, boy. And it just seems like it's causing their life to just continue to just, we can see somebody else and say, man, I don't know what's on them, but ain't nothing working for them, right? Am I right or wrong? We all know and we see people like this, right? And it's because they're not operating in the same type of life. So, in this verse here, 
in 3 John 3, 36, the verb translated has is in the present tense. So the one who believes has eternal life, watch this, as a present possession. Likewise, the one who refuses to believe on Christ has the wrath of God, watch this, abiding on them as a present possession. So one life is working for, one life is working against. Which side of that are you on? All the people that's on the Zoe side, give God a real good praise for that today. All right. Everyone else, we're going to keep delivering this to you until you get it, okay? Until your eyes are open, right? So, so the one who refuses to believe on Christ, see that they've got something else. They've got wrath. That means punishment, anger, and vengeance as a present reality in their lives. Now, how many know God isn't doing anything to them? But in the earth, there's something called the law of life that is in Christ Jesus and the law of the spirit of death. And these are in the earth. And we're operating in one or the other based off of what we believe. You all want to go a little further? All right. Let's look at some points under this. Letter A, then, everlasting life is a present tense possession. Let's prove that, right? Mouth of two or three witnesses. I shouldn't say that unless I can further develop that with, with supporting Scripture. So it's not something that begins when we get to heaven. That's what we've been taught, right? Let's get saved so that we can experience heaven. And you're going to miss out in, on eternal life right here on this earth because you're waiting to get to heaven to experience it. Come on, I'm preaching better than anybody saying amen in here. All right, well, well, I'm going to prove that to you today. Let's keep going. Watch this. So, so here, in, in, uh, so it's not something that begins when we get to heaven. There are a number of scriptures here that speak of everlasting life as something we possess right now in this current life. So in John 4, 14, remember we were just in chapter 3. Remember, John is one letter. Man put chapter and verse in there to help us find it quicker. So he's really not changing his thought in this fourth chapter, right? Look what 4, 14 says. And he's talking to the woman uh, at at the well, right? And he tells her all of her life, right? He tells her, hey, hey, she's there to get water. But he said, I've got some water for you now. <laughs> right? He started with what she was interested in, right? He said, no, no, I got some water for you. Now, I mean, that's going to pique your interest if somebody says, and the water that I'll give you, you'll never thirst again. <laughs> what kind of water is that right there, right? And where do I get this water from, right? So let's pick it up in verse 14. He says, and whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. What does never mean? Never, never right? <laughs> Y'all thought I was getting deep with that, didn't you, right? Because so, I want to really, I want to shift you today, right? There's a reality that sh you should be living that's functioning and working on a daily basis. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, or will never thirst. But the water that I give him shall become where? In him, a fountain of water springing up into. But, but notice, it's in you as a present reality. Come on, say somebody say, God's living in me. Through the person of the Holy Spirit. So I'm supposed to experience something here on earth that springs up into everlasting life. So you, you should get used to living a certain way on earth. Because that's the way it's going to be in heaven. That's why Jesus taught his disciples to pray uh, that my will be done on earth I'm trying to shift you today. Is there any sickness in heaven? Is there any lack in heaven? So, so, if I'm experiencing things, it's just because I don't have enough of that on the in, living on the inside of me. I'm going to prove that to you today. You want me to go further today? 
Now, I told you what I've done. I stopped ministering other people's messages. I've been delivered from that. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a place for that. Don't, don't, right until you, you grow and you gain confidence. But I'm going back and looking at everything for myself. L- look at John chapter 5, 24. John 5, 24, just the next book over, right? One letter, though. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has what? Not going to receive. But they what? And shall not come into judgment, watch this, but has passed from death unto life. Which means then I should not have any symptoms of death in my life. And I need to recognize when that shows up where that came from. Because that didn't come from God. So the judgment he's referring to here is the one uh, that decides a person's eternal destiny. So so this is where I want to set you free from people pleasing. And I'm going to give you one recipe, one remedy that will set you free for the rest of your life. You ready for it? It's worth over $5 million. (laughs) Every person who looks at you, right, maybe they don't believe in you. Maybe whatever it is, the next thought that should come to your mind is, but they don't have a heaven or a hell to put me in. Let me try that again. I think this side of the room will catch that, right? Because we run around, what did they say about me? What the Lord, what, 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 boy, they, what? It's a waste of your time. Why is it a waste of your time? Because they don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. I knew that side right there would catch it, right? And it frees you up from people, right? And it gives you this grace to just simply live your life for an audience of one, right? And you'll get to a place where you say, man, if it pleased God and disappointed man, then so be it, glory to God, right? You'll get to a place where, man, I did my best and God was pleased with the best that I had to give, but it didn't work for the people. I'm still going with God because I know God was pleased with what I did. Let's look at John chapter 6. So we've been in chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Now let's look at chapter 6. Look at what he said in chapter 6, verse 27. He said in 627, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food that in, or which endures to what? So my question would be then, what kind of food endures to everlasting life? He said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he said, if I'll labor to eat that food, see, we've been going to church, but have we been laboring to eat the food? Now let's just bring it right home. Everybody say, Pastor loves me. That's why he's getting ready to tell me the truth. For most people, the only food that they eat is the food that I labor to give them. I can't really tell what's going on in here right now because the light is just blind. It's just in my eyes right now, right? But, but he said the person who labors. For the food which endures... So obviously, then this word will stand up against anything this life has to throw against me. See, the person is laboring for that. Whatever life shows them, they know they have something greater than it. Whatever name it has, if it's cancer, they know that's got to bow to the name of Jesus. Right? And then what they're going to do is work that word and make that word, make that situation bow down. And that's a lifestyle that you continue all the way up into everlasting life now notice what he didn't say comma which the son of man shall give you 
So you don't have to work for eternal life. That's a gift. What you got to do is labor for that word so that you can live that word to make sure. See, it's he that endures to the end. Son of man shall give him because God the Father has set his seal on him. Let's look at letter B. So what is everlasting life? Now, who is really the only one that can define that? The one that created it, right? Right? Only one that can truly define that is the one that created it. So let's look at John chapter 3, verse 16. So what is everlasting life? John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish But later on, we'll receive everlasting life. But, but what? As a present tense reality. Right now. Somebody say, I have everlasting life in me and flowing out of me right now. So what is it doing for you? Because the only amount that can flow out of you is the amount that you have in you. So God's power is not limited. His power in us is limited based off of how willing we are to put that power in us through that word. So many people, now listen very carefully because I'm getting ready to challenge doctrine. So many people have mistakenly thought that the goal of salvation is the forgiveness of sin. Watch this. For the sole purpose of avoiding hell. So many people have lived their lives, right? They're not laboring for that word to grow in their relationship with God. They're just trying to live a repentive life so that they can avoid hell. And there's a difference. That's why if you give an altar call, listen to me very carefully, and 50 people come down, 47 of them are rededicating their lives. So that's not what John 3.16 is saying at all, right? Sure, not perishing in hell is an important part of what Jesus came to do. He accomplished that by paying the debt for all of our sins past present and future, but listen, but salvation is so much more than just getting our sins forgiven so that we can go to heaven instead of hell. I submit to you, he saved you so that you can have heaven right here on earth so that it's natural to you when you get to heaven. So there are tremendous benefits right now right here on earth, and eternal life is one of those benefits. But if our mind only thinks about eternal life in terms of when I get to heaven, then I miss everything that God wants to provide for me on earth. Let's keep working that thought. So Jesus defined eternal life for us. Let's look at John chapter 17, verse 3. And notice it's interesting that all of these are things that he's saying and emphasizing Before he transitions. In John chapter 17 verse 3 he says. And this is eternal life. And it's going to shock you. That you may be rich. And live in the house of your dreams. This is eternal life. God's going to make you a millionaire. See people will go crazy over that. (laughs) Throw money on the stage. All kind of stuff. But that's not why he saved you. Jesus said, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. You get to know God through the Old Testament. You get to know Jesus through the New Testament. But at the end of the day, they both are God. 
Now, I know that's not attractive, right? A lot of you all are disappointed in that definition because we've been conditioned to think materialism is a form of spiritual maturity. Wait till I get to another point. We've even been conditioned to think that someone that operates in the gifts of the spirit is spiritually mature. Some of them folks praying in tongues. Some of them folks prophesying. Some of them folks flowing in all the gifts of the Spirit, all nine of them just resting on them. As soon as it stops flowing, they doing something completely different over here. You know what the highest form of spiritual maturity is? Do you know him? So Jesus made it real clear, didn't he? He said, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Now, this word know is a Greek word, gnosko, and it means to know intimately, to understand, and to be sure. See, do you know God intimately? Do you understand who he is in your life? Are you sure about him in your life? So eternal life then is knowing God. See, if all you've done is believe on Jesus so that you won't go to hell, then you are missing out on everlasting life. You're missing out on the everlasting life that the Lord wants you to live right here on earth. You're chasing money and God is saying, if you chase me, I'll cause the money to chase you. You're missing it. You're spending all of your time working multiple jobs, slaving, working, slaving, working to get something that God will freely give you if you'll just get to know him better. He'll show you where it's all at. He'll allow you to work smarter and not harder. He'll show you how to collapse those three jobs into one and even get more income because you prioritize your relationship with him over life, over cars, over money, over clothes. He'll fix your marriage. He'll he'll fix everything in your life because if you're intimate with him, he'll be intimate with you. If you draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to you. And he'll unlock all of the secrets that you have been looking for and chasing and spending a lifetime trying to get. God will grace you with those in minutes and in hours and in weeks and in months of pursuing him. Stuff you've been chasing for a lifetime, God can bring into your life like that. And and I promise you, when God brings it in your life, There's nobody that can take that away from you, right? And when is it when God will bring things into your life? When he knows that you won't use them to replace him. Why is this so misunderstood? It's because the church has changed the message of salvation. See, we, that's why it's no negative words and don't say sin. People don't want to hear that. It's in the Bible, man. Watch this. They have placed a period after the word perish. Right? Think about it. For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Period. They forgot about the emphasizing, but shall have. So we've told them that salvation is about going to heaven and not experiencing heaven right here on earth. I think more people would be attracted to that. Right? So, so the way most of the body of Christ has lived their lives is, is in a repentive lifestyle. Instead of a victorious lifestyle. You all still following me out there? So they've told the world that the reason God sent his son to die 
for their sins was so that they wouldn't perish, period. That excludes the true message of eternal life and having an intimate relationship with God, watch this, as the true purpose of your salvation. Wow. Not going to heaven. But the true purpose of your salvation is to have a personal relationship with God. Most people aren't interested in that. They're interested in going to church, but not having a personal relationship with God, right? Because they know if God knows them, then I got to stop doing some stuff. And I don't want to get that close to God. I just want to go to church. Come on, somebody. And I don't want to spend my life in hell, not fully understanding that the closer you get to him, the closer he's going to get to you. And the stuff that you have that didn't come from him, you don't know that it's destroying you anyway. Right? And so you're missing out on all of the stuff that he actually wants from, from you because you won't be intimate with him. So now what does that look like, Pastor? It doesn't look like going to church on Sunday morning. That's like the after product. What are you going to do on Monday? What are you going to do on Tuesday? What are you going to do on Wednesday? See, 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 if you only eat food on Sunday, and that's the food I prepared for you. So I encourage all of you, right, in the same YouVersion Bible app are thousands of devotionals. Train yourself to get up every single day and spend time laboring for that food that's going to endure to everlasting life. All right? You can't live without the Word. So if you live in six days a week without the Word, you're not going to be that productive. This isn't something for a select few. This is normal Christian living. Everybody in here is blessed. That's saved. See, some of them don't, don't even know that. I said everyone in here is blessed as a present reality. Now, how much of that blessing you're walking in, but you're blessed. He doesn't determine how much you walk in. You do. Can I just, this is so strong. I can't say that. I can't say that. Why did I even write that? Because it's the truth. Here's the truth, folks. I'm going to just say it slightly differently than I wrote it. If this isn't your experience, then you aren't really living. See, that's supposed, that's supposed to flow out of you daily. So when was the last time somebody asked you, what is it about you that makes you different? Or do you just blend in with everybody else? Does anybody at your job even know you're saved, or is that your personal secret? Does anybody on your block, does anybody around you, anybody at the gym even know you're saved? Was that just your little secret between you and God that you're ashamed to even let other people know? So, or is it a reality that you live every day? Somebody say, my pastor is growing. So you, you can always tell when a pastor is growing. Because the word will go deeper. Can, can I say the rest of this? 
See, this is what drove the Apostle Paul. It's all about a personal relationship with a person and not a building that I attend. Some people are, are more proud of where they go to church than they are a personal relationship with God. It's like, come see my building. Come see what God is. No. Come get to know the God that's, that's changed my life. Come on, somebody. There's a difference. Let's look at Philippians. Let's look at what, what really drove Paul. Now, if you all know, Paul was a very accomplished man, was he not? Was Paul a very accomplished man? Right? In, in Philippians chapter 3, he said that a lot of things, he said, I, I, if anyone has a, a right to boast, I do. Right? He said, if anyone has a, a right to have confidence in the flesh, right, it's me. Why, Paul? Because he said, I was circumcised on the eighth day. He said, man, I'm, I'm from the stock of Israel. It's not in your notes. He said, man, I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. What? A Hebrew? I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. Concerning the law, a Pharisee. I know it frontwards and backwards. Right? Concerning zeal, I killed the church. Nobody more zealous for God than me. I was killing them. Concerning righteousness, what? Before the law, blameless. That boy was self-righteous, wasn't he? Now let's pick the real story up. See, when he met Jesus, watch all of this changes. Let's pick it up at verse 7. He said, but what things were gained to me, these things I have counted what? Lost. Now, he didn't say he lost these things for Christ. He said he considered them lost. Because God will use your education, your background, your expertise, whatever gifts, talents, graces he's given you. He'll use those for the kingdom. What he's saying is, I consider those things lost for Christ. Yes, indeed, I also count all things lost. He didn't say, I lost. He said, I counted. I consider it lost. Watch this. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. So, in other words, all of those accomplishments pale in comparison to the knowledge of Christ. Look what he said. My Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I might what? And be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is from the law but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness which is from God by faith. Look what verse 10 says. That I might what? That I may what? That I may what? And what? See, now we don't like the rest of this and the fellowship of his sufferings. See, we like those first ones, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection, right? Somebody say, I have resurrection power. Why does he give you that resurrection power? So that when life puts you in a tight spot, you can raise up from the grave up out of it. Come on, somebody. That's why Paul said the fellowship of his sufferings. See, I can't be like him if I don't experience what he experienced. See, a lot of you all are getting uptight uh, for what's happening to you. And I'm telling you, it's a privilege what's happening to you right now. Because God gets to demonstrate his resurrection power in your situation. See, we don't embrace that a lot of times, right? You need to learn how to start telling people, you better look at me and talk about me while you can. Because I won't always be in this situation. Come on, because there's something in me and there's something on me that's going to cause me to come out of this situation. Come on, somebody. With flying colors on the other side. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about you got to have that about you. And when you know him, you know that. So Paul said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Now, we really don't like this last one. So that I could be conformed to his death. Amen. And you know what he's talking about? See, every time you say no to sin, you die to self. Yeah. Right? And you begin to conform to the image of God. See, now you start to look more like him and less like the world. Come on. Somewhere else, Paul said, I die daily. 
And if you know anything about living for God, there are things you have to put on the altar every single day that you have to die to. Come on, somebody. Whether that's sugar, whether that's fried chicken, whether that's pork. Come on, somebody. Whether that's him, whether that's her, whatever it is, there are things every day we must get up and say, I die to that in Jesus' name so that I can be more conformed into his image. My time is getting away. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. Actually, my time is gone. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. Look what 2 Peter chapter 1 says. Now, this will bless you today, right? And so why would God, what is God's purpose for saving you? See that right there? That's a good example. Right? What, what is God's purpose for saving you? So that you can know him. I'm going to help you out. Just say, so that I can know him, right, and experience eternal life right now and throughout all of heaven, right? See, 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 God wants to use your life to show the world what heaven is like so that you can draw more people to him. Look at what 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4 says. It says grace, that word there, grace, is benefit, favor, joy, careers, and peace. Greek word irenate means quietness, rest, prosperity, to be set at one or made whole again. He says you can have grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. See, so, so how much grace and peace I have in my life is based upon how much knowledge I have about Christ. And he didn't stop there, though. He said, knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now, that word knowledge there is a Greek word, epignosis, and it means full discernment. So, so will you press in there hard enough to fully know who God and Jesus is in your life and have full discernment of that? Right? And watch this. So the more that I have, the more favor, joy, benefit, prosperity, rest, quietness, to be set at one again, the more wholeness I'm going to have in my life. You all see that? And he said, and I'll multiply that to you. Look at verse 3. As his divine power, see his death, burial, and resurrection, has given unto us, now wait a minute, all things that pertain to what? Has given us, sounds like eternal life has given us so that sounds like when i received him i received everything i needed in this life everything what's left after everything that pertains unto what but then look what he put on there it's conditional through the knowledge so you know what they say about people If you want to keep information from them, put it in a book. Why? They won't read it. What did Hosea say? My people are destroyed. Isn't this good? See, we've been waiting on God. Do it, God. Do it, God. And God's saying, I'm waiting on you. I ain't heard from you in uh, about three months now. I, I hope, is this helping anyone in here today? Because see, what, you, what you're believing him for, he can do like that. But you're not going to give your kids a car and they ain't spoke to you in, in months. Even though you might have the wherewithal and capacity to do it. Till that relationship is better. You'll notice even in the natural, you'll release based off of the relationship. You have all the ability in the world, but it's released based off of the intimacy. How I many you know that same thing is true in marriage? If you're not getting any, check the intimacy. (laughs) 
When's the last time we just went out? Just talked. Went for a walk. Do y'all still date each other? Or are you just roommates? So you're not going to be with people that you don't really know. Or you feel like we don't know each other the way we used to. Why is it so quiet in here today? Can we just give God a real good hallelujah in this place? So, so what has his divine power done? Given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. But it's what? Of him that has called us to what? See? Now, this is interesting. Which by which uh, have been given to us. This, was, this blessed me so much studying this. And, and fact check this first row. Fact check this. Did I read this right? He said, by which we've all been given exceeding great and precious promises. Right? And then I went and I looked that up. And did you all know that there are 3,568 promises in the Bible? I'm sorry, 3,573 promises in the Bible. There are promises about never failing, eternal life, your heart, forgiveness, receiving the Holy Spirit, finances, prosperity, employment, supplying all your needs, healing, wisdom, guidance, children, family, marriage, peace, temptation, overcoming it, deliverance, protection, fear, second coming. There, there, there are prom- so many promises in the Scripture, right? Well, this is interesting. This, this is what he said here. And you've been given exceeding great and precious promises that through these, through the promises, you might be partakers of his divine nature. So you, you hear what he said here? The more you get to know me, the more my promises will be true in your life. And the more my nature you'll take on. Watch this. Then he didn't stop there. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So now lust won't have a grip on me because I know him. And his promises range true in my life which makes my nature like his nature, which causes me to escape the corruption that's in the world. So you start processing this way. You start saying, man, God's done all of this for me, and you trying to get me to do what? You got to be out of your mind. I'm staying over here with the promises. Can you all see that? And literally, if you live this, it made so much sense to me because... A mature person thinks before they act. And they'll literally stop and say, is that worth all of this? That's what a mature person will do. An immature person acts and then deals with the consequences. A mature person thinks before they act. And they start thinking, all of this God's done for me is that worth all of this no sir I want to do I want to work with that some more so bad now in this conclusion let's all stand to our feet I'm just going to close because it's 952 but this conclusion is the best conclusion God has ever given me in my life I'll get to minister it at the next service but this one, we got to turn it over and let another group in. But, but things I just want to share with you in closing. How do you apply God's plan to your life? Number one is develop a daily regimen that allows you to spend time in the word every single day. How many of y'all say, I can add that to my life? Raise your hand. See, look around the room. Somebody say, I, I need to add that to my life. Look around the room. So you see you're not by yourself. Look around the room. That's the majority of the people here. Somebody lift your hand up and say, I can add that to my life. No doubt about it, right? And so when you do that, 
these things will make sense to you. So, so God's plan, number one, will demonstrate that life isn't meaningless and random. So statistics show that more and more people are taking their own life just because life seems completely random, purposeless, and hopeless. They wake up and they're saying, what is this all about? Why are we, what are we? And so the suicide rate is When Jesus, pro, or the word promises you in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Somebody say, God's plans for me, plans for me are, good. are good. And so when you're experiencing disaster, you should already know that didn't come from God. Amen. I'm just operating on the wrong side of life. And then I love that. He said, plans to give you a hope and a future. Somebody say, God's plans for me, God's plans for me is, to me is to give me a hope, a hope and, a and a future. Number two, God's plan often involves life out of death. Now, now, I want you to listen very carefully. Don't let this scare you. So the father's plan for his own son wasn't easy. So to succeed, it even involved death. Watch this. So ultimately, it involved life for all who believe. That's us. We benefited. But for Jesus, it involved life through death. So just to make things easy, did God have a great plan for Jesus' life? Yes, he did. He did, but it was one that involved the cross. First of all, watch this now. So it's likely that if his life involved the cross, at some point in your life, your life will involve one too. So don't despise the difficulties that you face. In God's order, life often comes out of death. So sometimes things will die before life is birthed out of them. See, this is what linked up church is. That other situation died so that life could be birthed in this situation. I just depended on how we responded to that. So his plans are deeper and wiser than you could ever know. But ultimately, God balances our temporal needs knowing that we are but dust with his eternal purposes. So sometimes the temporal needs will get removed so that you can really understand what you really need in life. Listen to what Ephesians chapter 2 says. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which he predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. And sometimes I have learned the good life for me has come out of death. You couldn't have told me with everything in me that was the best thing for me. I wanted that for the rest of my life. And it died. Sometimes God's plan is often revealed over time. Are you all getting anything out of this? So God is in control. That's number three. Even when we don't understand. Looking back, God's plan was determined before the foundation of, world, of the world, watch this, and was hidden for a long time. So you'll notice even when Jesus came, his own disciples didn't understand why he kept speaking about the cross. And maybe that's you today. Maybe as you look at the events occurring in your own life, you're wondering, you know, why has God allowed this to happen? Lord, why don't you take it away? We don't often get to know the whys at the time of the event. But looking back, sometimes we can see why. But whether or not we can see the why or not isn't the main point. Listen to this. The main point is what is God trying to teach you and how does he want you to respond is the main point. 
Because he'll use it to get you to grow. If you will allow him. Listen to what Romans 8, 28, 29. And I'm not sorry for taking this additional time. This is actually helping somebody right here in this moment. Okay. Some of you all, this is answering a whole lot of questions that you had about why, why, why. Stop saying why me and say why not me. I'm the man or woman for this assignment. Listen to what Romans 8, 29 says. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, watch this, call, if we know this, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God and to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. See, some things are happening because you're outside of his plan and purpose for your life. But you can repent today. You can get all that right today. And he'll cause all of that to still work together and come out good for you. Come on, isn't that a good God? Somebody ought to just, man, that's a good God right there. That's a good God right there. For those he foreknow, we already know before the foundation of the world, those he chose beforehand, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son and ultimately share in his complete sanctification so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. And so I want to challenge you today to don't question God or the things that are occurring in your life. Just simply submit to his will, plan, and purpose. Even if you don't understand why today, I promise you you'll understand why tomorrow if you'll just keep getting to know him intimately. When that happened to us 10 years ago, I thought that was the worst day of my life. 10 years later, that day ended up being the best day of my life. And it was all in the response. So now, I want you to just lift your hands up and just begin to worship the Father. You know where you're at on this journey, right? You know what's going on in your heart and in your life today. You know if your relationship with him is solely just going to church. You know whether or not you have an intimate, personal relationship with God. You know whether or not you're living for him. You know everything that's going on. You know you. And just let the Holy Spirit begin to minister to you today because he wants so much more out of a relationship with you than what you're currently giving him right now. And so I just want you to just go ahead and talk to him and say, God, I want more of you. I want to know you more intimately in my life. And when you do, more Zoe, more eternal life is going to flow out of you. So if you're in this room today and you don't have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, man, what a wonderful promise is that you can begin to live eternal life right now right here on earth you don't have to wait till you get to heaven it can start today with just simply you making a great decision about your salvation secondarily you might say pastor i'm saved but i don't live for god i go to church but i don't live for god and what you heard today just convicted your spirit and you're saying pastor i want to repent And I want to rededicate. I want to come back to Christ today. If that's you, I want to pray with and for you today. And then thirdly, if you don't have a church home, but you believe God has led you here, my wife, this staff, will be happy to receive you. We'll pray for you every single day of our lives. Every time you come in this building, just like today, we'll make sure that you get the Word of God and the Word of God only. So I gave three invitations today. The first is to be saved. Second is to return to Christ or rededicate your life. Third is to join Linked Up Church. My heart's desire is to pray for you, but I'll only know that you desire my prayers by the lifting up of your hand, lifting up of your hand. So if you want prayer on any one of those three invitations, would you shoot your hand up in the air right now? Just go ahead and lift it up and keep it up. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. I see that hand. God bless you, sir. I see that hand. God bless you, ma'am. I see both of you over there. God bless you, young fella. I see that hand. Anyone else? Just lift it up. Keep it up real high. You're not saved today. But you want this eternal life flowing through you, flowing out of you. You are saved, but you're not living for God. And you're saying, man, I got to get that right. I got to get that right. I'm saved, but I'm not a member of anyone's church. 
Man, Holy Spirit has convicted me, confirmed this is where he wants me to join. If you didn't raise your hand that first time, but in your heart you know you should have, would you go ahead and shoot it up in the air right now? Remember, God loves you and we love you too. Go ahead and lift it up. Lift it up, keep it up. All right, praise God. I see that hand up there. Would you all do me one more favor? If you raised your hand or you didn't raise your hand, but in your heart you still know you should have, would you gather up all of your personal belongings? Come meet me right down here at the front. Step into the aisleway. Come meet me right down here at the front. Linked Up Church, give them a big round of applause as they come. Praise God. Are we excited for them? Is she coming? Is that young lady coming? Praise God. Is she coming? Nope, she's not. All right. Praise God. You all helped me with that up there. All right. Praise God. Can we give them a big round of applause up here? Such a good looking group of people. So happy for you today. Praise God. If you're watching online right now, I gave three invitations. I'm going to take care of two of these right now. So if you want to give your life to God, you want to get saved, you want that eternal life living and flowing out of you right now, or you want to return back to Christ. I'm going to take care of both of those right now. So you can lift your hand up in the air as well. I want everyone up here lift up one hand towards heaven. That's where your help ultimately comes from. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me online and in the room. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that He died, rose from the grave, and He is alive right now. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me now as a result of what I've confessed with my mouth and what I believe in my heart. I am right now born again and in right standing with God and all my sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Linked Up Church, give them another big round of applause. If you all would, look to my right, your left. See that young man with that Bible lifted up in the air? He's just going to take you to another room and show you more specifically what you came here for. Go ahead and follow him right now. Give them another big round of applause. If you prayed that prayer sincerely, I want you to follow the information that's on your screen, and our ministry team will follow up with you accordingly. If you're in this room today and you prayed that prayer sincerely from your heart, you said, Pastor, I just, wasn't, I, weren't, I just wasn't comfortable coming down in front of a crowd of people. It's okay. We've made provision for you. We have something called a Connect card. It's in the seat pocket in front of you. If you'll just go ahead and grab it, fill out the top portion, and then check the box that applies to you. Every single week, people get saved. They return to Christ. They get baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit by filling out a Connect card. They even join our church. The moment I'm going to take up an offering, and when I do, take that completed card, drop it in the offering receptacle as it goes by, uh, and then our ministry team will follow up with you accordingly. You all can be seated, and while you're being seated, I am privileged to announce it is tithes and offering time. It is blessing time. All right, and if you're filling out that Connect card in a moment, an offering bucket is going to go by. Take that completed card and then drop it in that offering receptacle or bucket as it goes by. If you have not finished it by that time, it's okay. Just give it to any of our ushers or hostesses that are stationed around our worship center. Or uh, you can drop it in the offering receptacles as you exit the worship center today. 
And so while you're deciding which way God's leading you to give, there are four ways. You can go to linkedupchurch.com forward slash give and then follow the prompts. Or you can text give to 678-203-2500. You also have a white offering envelope that's in the seat pocket in front of you. If you're filling that out, make sure that you do so in its entirety. And then finally, there's Cash App. You can Cash App to LUC10514 if that's how God's leading you to give. So Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 10 says trust in the Lord completely out of the passion translation and do not rely on your own opinions but with all of your heart rely on him to guide you and he will lead you in every decision you make become intimate with him see there it is again and whatever you do and he will lead you wherever you go don't think for a moment that you know it all for wisdom comes when you adore him with an undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. See, intimacy produces all of that. Then you will find the healing refreshment for your body or that your body and your spirit longs for. See, something about getting closer to him. Not only will he heal my body, but how many know he'll tell you and teach you how to take care of your body? Because sometimes it's what we do to ourselves, not what the devil is doing to us, right? So sometimes we've got to obey God in our healing process, right? And then you'll find healing refreshment for your body that your body and your spirit long for. Glorify God with all of your wealth, honoring him with your very best, with every increase that comes to you. Then every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of joy. We don't need to add anything to that. Let's lift our tithes, our offerings up to the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's pray over our giving today. Father, we do trust you with all of our heart, Father. And we're acknowledging you, Father. We know that the tithe belongs to you, but the offering, Father, we're just seeking you about what to sow, Father. And so, something about the obedience in that, it just produces other good things in our lives, Father. Most importantly, more intimacy with you, more physical health in our bodies and our spirits, Father, more joy and expressions of joy, and all of our needs being supernaturally met. So ministering angels, go for it. Cause every household sowing. They're sowing because they have a revelation and they're intimate with you, Father. Call this to, cause this to be a reality in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Ushers, you may serve the offering buckets. While they're serving the offering buckets, draw your attention to the screens. We've just got a couple of quick announcements we'd like to share with you. Um, Greetings, Linked Up fam. I hope that you've had a wonderful week and that you're finding the announcements on the app both informative and insightful. This week's guest announcer is Linked Up Church member Brian Abson Sr. As always, you can scan this QR code during the announcements to be taken directly to the app on your device for more information. Now, I present to you this week's Linked Up News. Preteens, teens, and parents, listen up. This next event is for you. Middle and high school students, get ready for food, fun, and games at the Plugs Grill and Chill on April 19th at 7 p.m. Mothers, if you have infants or toddlers, then you won't want to miss Linked Up Kids, Mommy and Me, The Sound of Music, taking place April 20th at 10.30 a.m. This is an opportunity for moms to connect with other moms while exposing your children to the gift of music. Purpose Central, where purpose is developed, is providing you with possible career opportunities by hosting the upcoming job fair with Goodwill of North Georgia, Smyrna Career Center, on Wednesday, April 10th from 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at Linked Up Church. This event is free and open to the public. Ladies, prepare yourselves. Lash will be hosting a soul-stirring night of prayer, praise, and worship on Friday, May 10th at 7 p.m. Featuring Pastor Trish Gregory with powerful worship being led by special guest artists Adriana Casella and Emmanuel Cook. You won't want to miss it. Men of Linked Up, escape the ordinary and embrace the extraordinary at the Flex Men's Getaway on September 3rd through 5th at the Ritz-Carlton Reynolds at Lake Oconee. To register, go to our website, linkedupchurch.com. Elevate your journey of faith, work out your spiritual muscles, and strive for excellence in the company of like-minded men. At the Flex Men's Getaway, September 3rd through 5th, to register, go to our website, linkedupchurch.com. If you would like to become a member of Linked Up Church, we have three membership classes we call Next Steps. Join us today for Next Steps 1, immediately after this service. You can always view these classes anytime, anywhere on our website, linkedupchurch.com. 
That's it, Linked Up family. As always, we thank you for your time and attention and see you next week. All right, praise God. Now you know what's going on here at Linked Up Church for that Flex Men's Getaway. We have opened up some more king beds. I think we've opened up... uh, 10 more uh, king beds, and so if you're interested in having a king room, remember there are only 200 spaces for that, and so the distance, I want to make sure everyone knows that, is just 90 minutes from this door to the actual resort itself, and so it's an easy drive for all of us, and of course, all of the costs were up there, so make sure that you all take care of that as soon as you can if you're interested in attending, and then also, uh, we have a resurrection recap video. I'm not going to show it in the service today, but it will be on our social media sites, uh, uh, throughout the rest of the day. You'll see it on our uh, social media site. So make sure that you go and look at it. But these are the things I want you to know. Over 200 people made decisions for Christ last week. Come on, can we give God glory for that? There was about 1,100 people at our family fun day on Saturday. And so... Uh, We had over 170 volunteers. Thank you all. We still have the best dream team in the United States of America. And listen to this, folks. We had over 5,000 people in attendance on last Sunday morning, right? But, you know, if you listen to the message today, look around today. See, that's that's what we were talking about. There's no revelation of eternal life. See, they just came by to say hi. What is it? What's the, what's the three days? EBC, East, EMC, Easter, Mother's Day. All right, and so if you're online watching, we love you. All right, if you're here today to take Next Steps 1, would you please stand to your feet? That's our membership class process. If you're here today to take Next Steps 1, please stand to your feet. I'm going to invite you to come to the front, or you can walk along that wall. Uh, just go right out that way. And th- Which way? The classes are this way today? All right, and so we're going to have you either come this way or walk along that wall that way, and then we're going to take you to the class, all right? So let's go ahead and follow her. Let's give our new members a big round of applause. Praise God. Okay. All right. Yep. Classes are this way today. Yep. They'll get them. They'll get them. Don't worry. All right. And then if you are a first-time visitor, this is your very first time visiting today. Yep. Let me help them, right? And so the classes are going to be this way today. Yeah. And so, yep, you're going to walk along that back aisle way, and the ushers, hostesses, they'll help you get to where you need to go. All right. If you are a first-time visitor today, this is your very first time visiting Linked Up Church. 